date of that graduation is Friday the May 22nd at 6 p.m. at the Lake Front Arena at the University of New Orleans. We are so proud of Joshua and we send him our greatest congratulations, which reminds me, if you have graduating seniors this year, please give their names and the date of graduation um, to uh, the office. We, it's our um, tradition here to always give graduating seniors a Bible. And so since they cannot come to church, we will mail it, mail them their Bibles from the church. Also, be mindful that on Wednesday at 12 noon, we will have our noon today Bible study. And Thursday at 5, we will have prayer. And Thursday at 6, the Finance Committee will be meeting. The conference call number is posted on Facebook and uh, you can use that or look out for a phone message with the conference call number in the pin so that you should be here today. Thank you. Join me in our prayer illumination. Lord, open our hearts and our minds by the power of your Holy Spirit that as your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Our first scripture comes from the 16th Psalm. Listen for the word of the Lord. Protect me, God, because I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have nothing good. Now, as for the holy ones in the land, the magnificent ones, that I was so happy about, let their suffering increase because they hurried after a different God. I won't participate in their blood offerings. I won't let their names cross my lips. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup. You control my destiny. The prosperity, the property line have fallen equally for me. Yes, I have a lovely hope. I will bless the Lord with righteousness. Even at night, I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because he is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful followers see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful themes are always in your right hand. Our second, second scripture reading comes from 1 Peter, the first chapter, the third and the ninth verse. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born new into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and glorious inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Though through his faithfulness, you are guard, guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he is ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope, even if it is necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your family may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed, even though it itself 
It is itself tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him and so rejoice with the glorious joy that is too much for birth. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now please join me in our historic confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and dead buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Will you now join me in prayer? Breathe on us, breath of life. Fill us with life of you. So we may love as you have loved and do what you do. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for our lives. We thank you for being a head around us, protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you for your healing grace that is working in the lives of those our members who are on our sick and shattered list. We thank you for those our members who are recovering from the virus. We pray for the world that this devastating pandemic comes to an end. We pray that researchers come up with therapy for treatment and cure. Until that time, help us to be patient as we stay safely in our homes. Even though it's hard to be in our homes, we thank you that we have a place of refuge. We pray that you use us, Lord, to help feed those people who have lost their jobs. Let us be vessels of your love and your grace for all those who are in need. We pray that you bind the confusion that the enemy is trying to sow in our country. Help us to keep focus on our need to stay safe until the pandemic no longer poses a threat to us and our families. Find the line codes that say it's okay to sacrifice our children to go back to school before it is safe or to send vulnerable seniors to work to rescue the economy. Lord, we are leading and depending on you to give us our daily bread. We are trusting, Lord, that when all this is over, you will restore us to a new and better life with opportunities for all and not just for some. So help us, Lord, to wait until our change comes. Continue to raise up governors and mayors who will lead us in the ways that are for the good of all. Bless them and continue to endow them with your wisdom. We thank you that in the midst of this pandemic, we can still be the church. We thank you for the grace and mercy that you shower on us every day. Help us to live in gratitude for all we have done and for all you have done and all you are about to do. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of our Lord and Savior who leads us on the path of righteousness and life. May we continue to follow him all the days of our lives. It's in his blessed name that we pray. Amen. Then I kneel down to pray, pray. 
had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his eye, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious God, we give you thanks and praise for another opportunity to share a word from you with your people. We pray, Lord God, that as your word goes forth, that it does not return to you void but accomplishes what you set it out to do. So prepare every heart and every mind and every soul this morning to receive this word from you. And now, Lord God, remove me from me. Hide me beneath the cross, beneath the drippings of your precious blood. And when I speak, Lord God, let it be your voice that is heard. And when I'm seen, let it be you that is seen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of the law of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Let the church say, Amen. This is about the sixth or seventh week of our new normal. It has been six or seven weeks of social distancing or what the world health organization now calls physical distancing. I can tell you the truth. I did not handle this new normal well the last couple of weeks. My mistake was spending too much time watching the news. The news is totally depressing. Everything is about coronavirus. Today, in coronavirus, breaking news in coronavirus, tomorrow in coronavirus. It's just depressing. The news is depressing. And so not having the freedom to go and do the things we used to do and uh, do and the places we used to go is also depressing. On top of that, as much of you as much as I want to. I can't even go outside because of fear of stirring up my sinuses. I don't know about you, but in the confines of my home, I felt like I was going to lose my mind up in here. <laughs> I felt like I was going to act food <laughs> up in here. <laughs> Oh, 
but I know I'm not the only one that felt like that. I know that other people felt like that as well. Our new normal is like doing time with no possibility of parole. This whole pandemic is not just about the, the virus. Think of all the people who have lost their jobs because of the pandemic. They say 22 million people have lost their jobs. That's more people out of work than during the Great Depression. The unemployed have to worry about keeping themselves safe from the virus and keeping a place to live and food on the table. Many feel trapped in fear and in doubt. Many are longing for the peace of Jesus. I imagine that as the way the disciples felt on that first Easter evening when they found themselves locked behind closed doors. Early that day, John and Peter had run to the tomb of Jesus to see if what Mary had told them was true. They saw the empty tomb with their own eyes, not fully understanding what it meant. And so they decided to lay low. They were fearful that those who killed Jesus would come after them too. Motivated by fear, they locked themselves up for protection. They were trapped in fear and trapped in doubt. They did not know what to expect. They were living through an unprecedented event. Even though they had followed Jesus for three years, they found themselves being fearful and doubtful. Many Christians are fearful during these unprecedented times. Fear is a part of a human condition. Everyone experiences fear at one time or another. There is a physical purpose for fear. Fear motivates us to act. Fear motivates us to prepare. Fear alerts us to danger. Recently, fear motivated me to get my house in order and to prepare my last will and testament. The problem with fear is when it becomes irrational. That's when we must remember that God does not give us a spirit of fear. We should be strong and be of good courage when fear comes into the life of a Christian. There is a Christian to response to fear. Fear in the life of a Christian should motivate us to look to lean on and depend on Jesus. As Christians, we should understand that we don't have to fear because Jesus is with us. We don't have to live in fear and doubt when we have the peace of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That is what the disciples found out on that first Easter evening who had more faith in Jesus than the disciples. Even so, they found themselves locked behind closed doors because of fear. You would have thought that when they saw the empty tomb that they would have started rejoicing because Jesus did just what he said he would do. Instead, they felt fear, and their fear that they felt led them to a self-imposed lockdown. But Jesus did not let the fear of the disciples stand in the way of coming to them. When Jesus walked through the locked door, he said to the disciples, Peace be with you. And when he said that, all fear was gone and they rejoiced in the presence of Jesus. Just imagine the excitement they felt seeing our risen Lord for themselves. Any doubts they may have had about marriage before.
report of seeing the risen Savior was gone, and any fear they had was gone because they saw Jesus for themselves. And then Jesus breathed on them the breath of life. He gave them the Holy Spirit, which empowered them to carry out their mission. He said, as the Father sent me, I sent you. Suddenly they had a new life, they had a empowered life, and a new purpose for living. Thomas was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So when he heard their report, he doubted what they were saying. He said, unless he saw for himself and could put his finger in the mark of the nails of his hand and in the side of Jesus, he would not believe. Just as Jesus met the other disciples in their fear, he met Thomas in his doubt. The risen Savior that showed himself to the fearful disciple, the same risen Savior that showed himself to doubting Thomas, is the same risen Savior that will show up in our own fear and our own doubt. Jesus shows up in our fear and doubt because he always meets us where we are. He always shows up because he loves us and wants the best for us. He shows up and helps our unbelief and eliminates our fears. Oh, bless his holy name. Our risen Savior meets us where we are, but he never leaves us the way he finds us. Jesus shows up and out to faith and certainty. Jesus shows up and blesses us with his peace. If we haven't found his peace in the midst of the pandemic, it's because we're too focused on the challenge and not on Jesus. Fear and doubt come to all of us. That doesn't keep Jesus from coming to us. But we can't let fear and doubt keep us from seeing Jesus and what he is doing. It's always beneficial not to focus on our challenges, but to focus on Jesus. It's even more important in these unsettling times. In times like these, it's time to stop thinking about what the coronavirus might do to us. And it's time to look to the one who is always with us. It's time to look to the one who will never leave us or forsake us. In the midst of this tragic pandemic, it's time to stop focusing on how bad things are and look to Jesus. It's time to take seriously Paul's advice and reorient our thinking. Paul reminds us that whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. When we do, we will see Jesus and experience peace. That's when we will be able to rejoice. That is when we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to make Jesus' mission our mission. There is no doubt that the number of deaths in this pandemic is tragic, and we pray for the family who lost loved ones to the virus. I was talking the other day to one of our members who decided to stop looking at how bad the pandemic is and to start looking for the food. She said she used to post on Facebook the number of people who died from the virus. But now she started posting how many people are surviving the virus. In focusing on the survivor, she was focusing on something that is worthy of praying. It helped her to see that even in the pandemic, there is reason for hope. Each and every day we need to look to Jesus and not our problems, 
We need to look to Jesus so that we can experience his peace and be empowered by his Holy Spirit. When we do, we will find that we have more than enough reason for hope. Having the peace of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives strengthens us to endure the challenges of this life. Having the peace of Jesus in our life doesn't mean that we disregard the dangers of life. We don't forget about being safe in the pandemic because we have the peace of Jesus in our lives. I don't have to tell you of all the pastors and believers who, must, who misunderstood the peace of Jesus and the power of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit in our lives. They thought that they could ignore physical distancing rules because they had faith. Now they are dead from the very virus. They thought they had faith that would protect them, that their faith would protect them from. But that isn't how faith works. Faith doesn't shield us from poor decisions. In the name of faith, folk made bad decisions and they put the Lord God to the test, and they paid with their lives. They did not use the wisdom of God to keep themselves safe. Recall that when Jesus tempted Jesus to jump off the pinnacle of the temple and to call on the angels of God to save him, Jesus refused. He refused because he had the wisdom of God and he would not put God to the test. No matter how much faith we have, no matter how much peace of Jesus we have, no matter how much power of the Holy Spirit we have, we must not do foolish things thinking that God will save us. Yes, have faith and don't live in fear. Yes, embrace the peace of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, but take precaution to keep yourself and others safe. Keep looking to Jesus because Jesus will carry us through. Folk are running around protesting the shutdown of the economy as if the economy was their savior. I know folk are suffering because they have no job, but the economy can't save us. The economy can't kill us. The economy can't fill our sensitive soul. The economy can't give us life. Only Jesus can. Jesus is our Savior, and he is our Lord that always provides, regardless of what the economy is doing. It's better to keep our faith in Jesus than to keep our faith in man. In times like these, as the old hymn says, trust and never doubt because he will surely bring you out. That's why I came to tell you today to trust and believe that our risen Savior lives. Believe that Jesus is with us and goes with us through the most difficult times in our lives. Trust and believe that God is working all things together for our good. Trust and believe that Jesus will continue to make a way for us even when we can see no way at all. Live with the assurance that the resurrection power of Jesus that always uh, takes what others give up for dead, it always brings new light into it. And that is our hope. That is our prayer. And that is our peace. The good news is that Jesus has not stopped showing up in our fear and doubt. Jesus has not stopped granting his peace. Jesus has not stopped giving his Holy Spirit. Jesus has not stopped asking us to be the church and do the work of the church. Jesus shows up in our fear and doubt and gives us the peace of God that passes all understanding. The more we look to Jesus, the more we rest in his peace, and the less we will let fear and doubt take 
control of us. Our Savior is able to do what he wants to do. Let's not think that the peace of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit is for us alone. It's not. We have this peace so that we can work with uh, for Jesus and share the good news of Jesus with everyone we meet. The work of Jesus and spreading his good news is a little different now, but we have modern technology and we can share the good news of Jesus. We can still see the needs of others and feel those needs. We can share what we have with others. There are a lot of hungry people now. We can bless them not only with our prayers, we can bless them with something to eat. We can bless them um, with peace that we have, have gotten from the Holy Spirit. We are blessed with the peace and the Holy Spirit so that we can bear witness to the awesome power of God's love in Jesus. We have peace and the power of the Holy Spirit, not because our faith is so strong. We have it because Jesus loves us and wants to equip us to carry on his work. If you have let fears and doubts come into you, your life, be assured that Jesus is the answer to your fears and to your doubts. Make up your mind today to embrace the peace of Jesus. May the peace of Jesus be with you. May he breathe on you the breath of life so that you may love as he has loved and do what he has done. Let the church say amen. 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 It is now time for our invitation to Christian discipleship. There may be someone out there viewing who does not have a church home and who is standing in the need of fellowship with other believers. If that describes you, I urge you today on Facebook, and we'll try and catch you, and we'll pray to you. Do it today, tomorrow, my day. Do it while you need to live out of the dream. Give 
and it will be given to you a good measure. Press now, shake it together, running over will be put into your lap. For the measure you use, it will be the measure of that to you. Amen. You will see on uh, PowerPoint the three different ways that you can give. The drive-thru offering is every Sunday from 11.30 to 12.30. You may put your offering in the mail, or you may pay online at www.cartelmountzionsumc.org. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for all of the many ways that you bless us. And we thank you for touching all the hearts of those who will give to your mission and ministry today. Pray that you will bless them, Lord. Bless them as only you know how. Give them back a double portion of all they give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.